Great morning, great morning. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures, and we're on an intentional course, and that is really to pursue and to go after our Lord. Uh, he's seeking us, but he also wants us to seek him. Seek him while he may be found. And so we're going to start today and uh, sing this song, I'm Chasing After You, No Matter What I Have to Do. I Need You More and More. And that song came to me, and it's on the internet, a young man uh, who penned that song and sung it. And so I'm just going to do a little part of it. But what we're going to do is go back and look at, um, we were talking about a Saul being a leader and Saul, God rejecting Saul. And God told him, telling the prophet Samuel to go and anoint David. And we're going to look back at that because God right now is seeking to, for those who really love him those who really want to be with him. And we talk about the wedding that's coming, um, um, that's going to come when the bride is joined with, with our Lord. So whenever you uh, have a marriage, you know, a lot of people get married for different reasons. You know, some people, uh, because they're really, 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 really in love. Hallelujah. And they, they want to be united and bound with a person uh, because the twain, it says, shall become one flesh. Now, or some people get married because it's, it's uh, politically correct or it's um, for uh, families' ties to, to strengthen the family or to make sure that money is, is, uh, is, is stays in the family. So there's very reason. But God is love himself. And he's not concerned about wealth and stuff. He's not concerned that he has to go after that. It's that it already belongs to him. But he is seeking for true worshipers, those who really love him. And that's why Jesus said, all that the Father gave to me will come to me. So he's not bringing anyone to his son. He's not going to say, well, I'm just going to take anyone who really doesn't love him. Yeah, uh, because God himself is love. And so I was reading this here and um, that song is, I'm chasing after you. After I begin to think about God rejecting soul and choosing David. So we're going to pray about it and we're going to sing that song. And I think in this season and time when we want to say, I want God to choose me, he's not just try, not trying to just fill heaven with anybody. You know, like some people say, um, uh, you go, you have a party and just anybody can come. But God really wants people who want to be there. He's not going to, like we can see the, uh, the parable about the wedding feast where it says he had bid his, uh, the children of Israel to come. And some of them make excuses. You know, I just got married or I just bought an oxen. I just had some land. I just did this. Thing. And then he said, go into the hedges and highways and, and compel them to come. But he, because he wants this, this to be a joyous, a happy song time. It's not going to be because somebody made me. It's, it's nothing worse than having a big party and people coming out of obligation. They're coming because, uh, well, you know, I owe him something. I owe her something. I'm coming in and I'm going to eat the food. with Ed. That's, that's not the right atmosphere. Okay. Not for love. <laughs> we all know that ourselves. When you fix a big feast and then people come who don't really want to be there. They pick over your food. They, they just, they don't have any, they, they don't care. So God is really after the heart. He said, I'm searching the hearts and I'm trying the reins. So he's seeking us for those who love him. And we want him to know that we're chasing after him. We love him too. We love him as he loves us. We love him. And he said, you should know his disciples wherein they have loved one for another. If we don't love people and we are bitter and strife and, and, and jealous and tearing each other and eating and devouring one another, that is not God in us. We want God to rest, rule, and abide in our hearts. We want God to flow through us. And that means we want love to flow through us. So we're going to Say a prayer, and then we're going to sing this song and go to the scriptures and look at and see um, what's happening in the spiritual realm with, with, with the Spirit of God moving among the hearts of people, okay? Father, we thank and praise you for this day. We do love you. We know that you love us because you proved it. You proved it on the cross of Calvary when you, hallelujah, Lord God, allowed, Lord Jesus, your life, you laid it down. You had the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. For the word declared that God was in Christ, reconciling the world back to himself. We love you. We want you to know that we love you. And we yield to you our body, soul, and spirit. May this word fall on good ground and take root 
in the very depths of our souls. We magnify you and we are singing the songs of praise unto you. We give it unto you the very fruits of our lips. We ask you to have your way as we go into this word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to look back at 1 Samuel because yesterday we did the tape and we was talking about Saul and Jonathan being the example. Saul, the king of Saul, of, of, of Israel, being the example. So we're looking back at the book of um, Samuel, uh, which is a, a few verses prior to when we um, read yesterday. And it says that Saul was self-willed. Saul reigned uh, one year. This is the 13th chapter of 1 Samuel. And when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him 3,000 men of Israel, where um, 2,000 were with Saul uh, and Bethel, and a thousand was with Jonathan. And we said yesterday that God always made sure that him and Jonathan uh, had had weapons, but he didn't make put it in the hands of the people. And the rest of the people, he sent every man to his tent. So so he protected, he had 2,000 soldiers with him and a thousand with Jonathan, his son. So he was really kind of thinking about his own house, okay? And a lot of times, you know, as ru rulers, and, and God had put him over Israel, but he was saying here, he, he took 2,000 soldiers and put them near him and 1,000 to put around his son. And the rest of the people, he said, <laughs> and the rest of the people, he sent every man to his tent. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Gebal, and the Philistines heard it. And Saul uh, blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, let the he Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten the garrisons of the Philistines and that Israel was um, was also, that Israel also was, was had in, um, uh, 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 this word is getting me. Anyway, let's go. The people were called together after Saul and the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and people of the sands, uh, which is in the sea shore in the multitude. And they came and pitched and east of uh, Beth Avi. And when the men of Israel saw that they, they were in a strait, all the people were dismayed that the people did hide themselves in caves and thickets and rocks and in high places and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went out over Jordan to the land of Gad. So the children of Israel was fleeing because they really didn't have no weapons. We learned the other day they didn't have no weapons, okay? <laughs> and Saul was, but Saul always kept, uh, as you tell, um, uh, protection around him and around his son. And he tarried seven days. Saul uh, intrudes into the priest's office. And it says, um, and all the people followed and was trembling. And they, the, the, so the children of Israel themselves were trembling because now the enemy is in pursuit, but they couldn't protect themselves. We learn in this next chapter that they didn't have any weapons, okay? But Saul had soldiers around him and soldiers around his son, okay? And it says, and, and he tarried seven days, and so they sent for Samuel, and but Samuel came not, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, bring hither the, the, unto me, uh, the peace offering and and offered the so Saul now is saying I'm gonna move into the priest or um position, I'm king, and now I'm gonna move into the priest position. He was really puffed up, okay? Because the, the only one we have who is king and priest is Christ, okay? So now Saul is moving into the because, and he's selfish too. He's only protecting himself with two thousand of the, his soldiers and one thousand around his son. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him and he, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me. So he's really thinking about himself. And I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. I will force myself to go into the priesthood and pray for myself. Okay. Now, you don't need a leader like that, y'all. This is for real. 
Okay, and Samuel said, So thou hast done foolishly, thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever, but now the Lord has not but the but thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be captain over. So we see how God is renting the kingdom. And that's why we talk about um, the man after God's own heart, which is David. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to go to that. God is, is and I'm going to go looking at that scripture in Samuel. We're going to go to the book of Acts. Because the book of Acts, when God chose Saul, the apostle Saul, not King Saul. This is years and hundreds and thousands of years later. Saul, whose name was changed to Paul, now begins to cite to the children of Israel in his time. Let me show you how God is watching over his word. In his time, he began to say to the children of Israel in the 13th uh, chapter of Acts. And we're going to begin at the uh, 14th verse. It says, but uh, they departed from Pega, uh, I mean, Paul and Barnabas. Okay. And, and Paul's name was Saul before, but God changed his name. God will change our name, meaning that we're on a different uh, course. Okay. So now it says, when um, Paul and Barnabas, when Paul and his companions loose from uh, Paphos, they came to Pergamos of uh, Pamphilus, and John departed from them. And when they departed um, and came to Antioch in um, Poseidon, went in into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. So Paul is now in the synagogue. And after the reading of the law, because every Sabbath day, according to this writing here, they read the law. They read the same books we were going through, which is the Pentateuch, the first five. They read out of those books. And Paul, it says, and after the reading of the law, the prophets and the rulers of the synagogue sent and, and said unto Paul, Ye men and brethren, if you have any word of exaltation for the people, say on. So they go give him space. Like if you go to visit some people, say, well, you have anything to say to the people. So now they're asking Paul. Do you have anything to say or any words of exaltation for the people? Then speak, okay? Then Paul stood up and beckoned with his hand, Me, You men of Israel, ye that fear the Lord, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose your father, ex exalted the people when they dwelt in, in as strangers in the land of Egypt, which we read about that. And with a high arm, with a mighty outstretched arm, he brought them out. And about and then he told, tells them he's going through the whole history that we were reading the, the Pentateuch, and so it's not like people say the Old Testament is not important. Well, Paul is is speaking to them out of the Old Testament. So that's, that's why we were talking to my sister. Now we were saying you don't really understand the fear of God if you just read the New Testament. Well, I mean you can see how God will move on people, but in the Old Testament, how strict it was and how. God was right there to, to, to deal with certain things, okay? And Paul began to say how God suffered um, them for 40 years in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, how God gave them the, the, the land. And after that, he gave to them judges, which we, which we were in the book of Judges, after the space of 450 years. So 450 years, God was dealing with them with judges. So we know God is watching over his word because we see from the time he rejected Saul, King Saul, and chose David. Then he's coming now, he's telling us in this season and time, this is important for us because God is the same God, okay? And his rules and his, his, his laws are the same. So the only reason we are not destroyed now is because of the grace, because through Christ came grace and truth. Grace, which is unmerited favor. God has given to the world, okay? But it says, um, after that, he had uh, judged them about the space of 450 years until Samuel, the prophet, which we see that Samuel is talking to King Saul and telling him, God is taking the kingdom from you and giving it to a man after his own heart. It says, and afterwards, he desired a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of, of Sis, 
a man of the tribe of Benjamin, but the space of 40 years. So Saul was king for 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised him up. He raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony, saying, I have found David, the son of Jesse. So God found David. He told Samuel, go down to Jesse's house and anoint the king of Israel. And he went to Jesse's house, and Jesse had several sons that was good-looking, strong, mighty, and, you know, attractive flesh on the outward. But when, they, when the uh, prophet said, no, this is not the one God chose. He said, you have another one. Oh, yeah, we have David over there. He's taking care of the sheep. They said, send for him. Excuse me. And when David came, God poured the oil down onto David's head because God is searching hearts. He's not going by the outward. We are very impressed with outward. If people look good and, and they're all fancy and they're all dressed up and they're all smelling good and they got money, do we think this is the one? But that's not what God, he's looking at the heart. And he says, um, See, God said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Okay. Now, if you read all the way down, you will see how many of the Old Testament scriptures that the apostle Paul cites those scriptures. He begins to say, uh, then he goes and down and says that Christ is the son of David. Thank you, Jesus. And it says, a men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, whosoever among you that fears God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. God is sending his word like the sower who's sowing the seed to those who are heirs of salvation. He clearly said his sheep will hear his voice. They will hear him. Whenever the gospel is preached, that's why Paul said, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, whosoever among you. So all the stock of Abraham they have to be the ones who fear God. We talk about Jonathan in the Old Testament, which was the son of, Saul, of King Saul. He feared God. He still had the fear of God in him. And so he says, uh, to you is the word of this salvation sent. That God is sowing his word out to those who have the fear of God in them. And it says, then you can go down and see it again and say, God has fulfilled the same unto their children. So God, he's talking about, uh, when they, how God has fulfilled his word, how God um, is accomplishing his word. For they that dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew not it, yet the voices of the, because this is what he's telling them. For they that dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voice of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, so the prophet is read every Sabbath, but Paul is telling them, they who dwell in Jerusalem and the rulers, because they knew him not, which means they didn't know God. You see, God is saying, those who know me, those who, are, who I am in their soul, those who from the beginning, he said, they didn't, and Jesus said, they could not come to me because they did, never knew God. They never knew him. He clearly tells us that as we look at the scripture of Jesus, that when we come to him, it's because we, in our essence, in our uh, the form being formed, we knew God. God knew us, and we knew God. Thank you, Jesus. That's why he said, for they that dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not. You can see all the time Jesus said, you could not come to me because you don't know God. There is no light in you. There is only darkness is in you. No light. Okay. And so we see here it says, And neither uh, nor yet the voices, they didn't know, know God, nor the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day. So the reading of the scriptures every Sabbath day and the prophets to the people that are sitting there in the congregation, the people do not receive it. Because he said, because they don't know God, there is no light in them. Okay. And so now I look at, talk about seeking God. And it says, 
Um, and though they found no cause of his death in him, yet they desired that Pilate, that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled which was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him. So we know that they was killing him because there was no light in them. There was only darkness in them. Thank you, Jesus. And Paul began to say, God has fulfilled the same unto uh, their children. So Paul said, God has fulfilled the same unto uh, us. So Paul is saying to them, God has fulfilled the word that he prophesied. Uh, uh, for generations past, God prophesied that word. And he said, God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children. We are the children of those people who were sitting way back there, okay? Uh, uh, in that he has raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second Psalm, Thou art my son which is in Psalms 2, this day have I begotten thee. And he began to say, and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. So we're going to focus on David now because David is the one is the worshiper and the praiser. And David is the one that uh, uh, is upon the tribe of Judah. And it's, God is looking for worshipers, okay? And we see in there, and the Bible tells us clearly that God is a jealous God. He is jealous. Uh, and I see when David began to say, um, um, behold, you just, he talks about them in Habakkuk, the despisers and wonders and, and the people that perish, which we saw in Acts, the 13th chapter, okay? But I want to go to, um, in Isaiah, what I want to go first to, um, the Lord who giveth songs in the night. I'm not going to do that yet because it's that God will begin to put songs in our heart. He will be like David was a worshiper and God saw him that there was, there was a light in him and that God saw who he was. That's why he told the prophet uh, Samuel to go down and anoint David. And so we're going to go quickly to, um, well, Exodus 34 and 14 says God is jealous. God is jealous. That's why he said, I'm chasing after you. No matter. And David, a man after the heart of God. Because he's after the heart of God, that's who God is looking for. Okay? And it says, um, I'm going to go to Isaiah. The reason you know, I'm worried, I've been up studying, but already I see a little movement. <laughs> uh, I need it. My house, as big as it is, it's still not uh, set up for me to actually have a place that I would like to have that I can go in um, without disturbing. Uh, just like every little room seems like there's something else going on. But anyway, we are going to go to Isaiah 55. And it says, um, Ho, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters, and he that has no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and labor for that which does satisfy? Now hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Thank you, Jesus. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that knoweth, that thou knoweth not, and nations that knew thee not shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord, seek you the Lord while he may be found, and call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways, and let the upright man his thoughts. Let, it, let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For though my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. And so this is telling us it's time to seek God, and with a pure heart, and with a sincere heart. This is on um, Isaiah 55, and beginning at the first verse down. Read all the way down to 13, Okay. <laughs> I know you're saying, why is he rushing? I'm rushing because of issues, okay? So, but what I got out of this lesson, too, is um, Psalms 42, is which we're going to uh, uh, end with. Psalms 42. We're going to end with that. 
Uh, we are getting close to the time that God is coming, and he's coming for those who really love him, to those who are after his heart. It talks about the spirit in us. Uh, God is jealous, and he knows. That's, that's why he knows if we are wholehearted or half-hearted. Hallelujah. And we're really seeking after him. We really love him. And Psalms 42 is what we're going to end with. It says, and we, it, this is a song too. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire and I long. To worship thee. Hallelujah. And I long to worship thee. And it says, as a deer, as the hearth panteth after the water, so uh, water brook, so panteth my soul after thee. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Which shall, when shall I come and appear before God? We should be in that stage in our walk with him. When are you coming for me? When are you going to call me up? When are you going to draw me to me? Draw me closer. Uh, never let me go. Thank you, Jesus. It says, my tears have been my meat and night, day and night, while they continue, say unto me, Why is, where is the Lord? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them in the house of God and with the voices of joy and praise with the multitude that kept a uh, holy day. So he's saying he's joining himself with those who are praising God. And that is what who is going to be caught up. Those are the ones who are worshiping and praising God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. For his, when we are drawn into his countenance, we are drawn into him. Hallelujah. We're going to, O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the Her 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 Hermonites. From the hill of Mazar, deep calleth unto deep at the noise of the water spouse. All that the waves and the billows are gone. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night, his song shall be with me. And I looked up the songs of God. It's talking about the God will put a song. And we talk about the joy of the Lord. God gives us songs. This is the Lord who giveth songs. And we learn that God himself gives us songs. So read 42, but I want to go to Job, Job uh, 35. God himself is the one who puts a song in our heart. Thank you, Jesus. He puts a song, and that comes out of Job, the 35th chapter. It would be good if, 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 if you all, like you said, you're always surrounded by those who are praising God. That's why when we come into the sanctuary, everybody in the house of God is not just for, shouldn't be there just for tradition and just for the sake of, uh, I'm going to say I went to church today. No, I come in to worship him. I come to praise him. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to Job 35, which we learned something in Job 35, verses 7 through 16. Okay. I pray that you are seeking him, that you are call and know that he says, um, the song I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. <laughs> I need you more and more, more and more. I'm chasing after you. you see. Okay, songs, I mean, Job 35, verses 7. And it says... If thou wilt be righteous, what givest thou him? This is what um, Elhu, which is the young man who comes and speaks to David and his friends. If thou be righteous, what givest thou him, or what receiveth he of thine hand? Thy wickedness may hurt a man as thou art, and thy righteousness may profit the son of man. By reason of the multitude of oppression, they make the oppressed to cry. They cry out 
by reason of the arm of the mighty. But none saith, where is God, my maker, who giveth songs in the night, who teaches us more than the beast, who teaches us more than the beast of the earth and maketh us wiser than the fowls of heaven. So none says, none says, where is God? We're talking about who is really seeking God. When you read that little passage there, it says, um, thy wickedness may hurt a man. You may be able to beat up on a man. And thy right um, righteousness may profit some people if you're a good person. But by reason of the multitude of oppressions, they make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. So the, the in this realm, men are either they're being good and they're getting praise for it, or they're being uh, mighty and strong and violent, and that is an issue too. But he says, but none saith, where is God? That's why he says, I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, we have to seek God. It says to seek the Lord while he may be found. We have to, we want to seek God. You can be one or two of these men, the one who is with his might or the one who is, who is, is kind and good and they're getting praise for that. But he says, none saith, where is God? And he said, and God, um, my maker. No one says, that's verse 10. Where is God, my maker? Okay, because we're so busy either beating up people or getting praise from people. Okay. But none saith, where is my maker who giveth songs in the night? And I was reading all of it. Now, maybe I'll come back later on this day and give you the ones that talk about God gives songs. Hallelujah. And there's a lot of scripture about um, the songs that God gives into our, our soul. Just like he said to those people that they did not know him. But when we know him, he will give us songs of praises. And that's coming to my mind too. He will give us songs of praises. He will put a song in our heart. Okay? He will put a song in our heart because we were created. He will, he's creating us to praise him. And therefore, he's in us. So we're going to close out now. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of these days, I'm going to be sitting with Jesus and there'll be nothing to I won't be like Martha who's trying to get up and do all the housework and do the cooking. I'm going to be like Mary and just going to be right at his feet all the time. It's going to be, like she said, the story of Martha and Mary where Martha said, Lord, because she was taking care of the natural things and all the people that came with Jesus, she was feeding them. and I mean, that's necessary too. But she wanted the Lord to tell Mary, to tell Mary to get up <laughs> from your feet and come over here to help me. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are troubled by many things. But that one thing which is most needful, Mary has chosen, and that will not be taken from her. I'm going to put that thing on there to put that scripture. Because the thing which is most needful is that we seek God. Like he said in Job, uh, but none saith, where is God my maker, who giveth songs in the night? God will give you songs, but you have to seek him. Thank you, Jesus. And that's why you will have songs of praises he gives to me. Songs of praises he gives to me. He gives songs of praises. I'm going to look at this. So I'm going to try to come back and talk about the songs. Where is None saith, where is God, my maker, who gives songs in the night? That could be our next tape, okay? Because God gives us songs of praises. He, he gives us that. But we have to want to seek him. We have to want him. And you read this here, uh, 35th chapter of Job, and a different type of, um, if thou be righteous, what giveth thou him? Or what receiveth he of thy hand? Thy wickedness may hurt a man. So if you are wicked and strong and powerful and, and evil, you may hurt a man. Okay? And if thou are righteous, you may profit somebody. Okay, and by, by multitude of oppressions, they make the, the, the oppressed cry. So people are just, if you look at this here example, what's people doing to people? They're either making them, oppressing them and making them cry and using their might, or in other words, they, they're pressing down on people. But he says, none says, where is God my maker? 
That's the seed that God looking for, the people who looking for him, okay? <laughs> That's who he's looking for, not people who taking advantage of, I'm, I'm so powerful and I'm so mighty and I'm so this and I'm so that, or I'm just, oh, I'm so good. and I'm, No, God for God looking for, okay? So we're going to close out. Father, we thank and praise you for reminding us with this brief time. Hallelujah, Lord God, helping us, God, to understand that we are to seek you. Hallelujah. We are seeking our maker, our creator. Hallelujah. You said there's none seeking you. We thank you, praise you. You said you're seeking for true worshipers, and we want to be considered, oh God, when you make up your, your jewels. Consider us, Lord God, for we are seeking you, and we're calling upon you while you're there. Hallelujah. We love you as the deer panthers for the water brook, so our soul is longing after thee. Hallelujah. You alone are our heart's desire, and we long to worship you. We give to you Hallelujah, you this day, the fruit of our lips. We pray that your will be done in us and through us. It's in Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray and count it done. Hallelujah, we're not like the others, Lord. We are seeking you. Hallelujah. We thank you and praise you for this, this word. We thank God for you joining us. We're going to get ready to go do our, our Martha duties. And then we're going to get back to the word. This is where we, this is our real joy. And it says, with joy do you draw from the well. So, um... With joy, we draw from the well of salvation. Okay. I gave it to my, my sister B, Miss B. Uh, we were talking about um, drawing from the well of salvation. With joy, do we draw. And the joy of the Lord is what our strength. And make a joyful noise of the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with glad. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that, that those songs, uh, Psalms 149, I wanted to uh, read that. So read that too. We're going to come back with songs of praises. The song of praises he will give to us. We need, but this main thing he said in Job 35, you read that. Beginning at the seventh verse, the type of people that is indicated in those verses. But none say it, where is God, my maker, who gives songs in the night? Okay, and we're going to say, who teaches us more than the beasts? of the earth and maketh us wiser than the fowls of the air. Going all the way down to verse 11. Okay. We got to be the ones that seeking and say, where is my maker? <laughs> the Bible says you must first believe God is. First, you got to believe that he is and that he rewards those that diligently seek him. First, you got to believe because you're not going to be praising if you don't even believe it. Some people don't, they're so caught up with their own issues. Okay. First, you got to believe that God is. And that he rewards. Okay? And we believe and we know that God is God. Okay? And the fact that you have that, you're already coming through. You're already being drawn to him. Okay? That's what's important. A lot of people don't even believe in God. They they, they in this other group over here. They, 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 thy wickedness or their righteousness is what they're banking on. They either figured I'm wicked and I'm going to do as much as I can and I'm righteous and I'm going to be praised for that. But none says, where is God, my maker? Let's not be like that. Let's seek the Lord and call upon him. I'm chasing after you. Y'all know that song. No matter what I have to do, I need you more and more, more. And then the other one that says, Lie as the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You, and it talks about being in his countenance, being in his presence. Okay, that's what we got to be longing for, being in the presence of God. Read chapter 35 of Job, and I'll give you these other scriptures too. The one in Acts is talking about how the people don't even know who God was, even though they were hearing the words read every Sunday. They would hear the Bible read every Sunday. They did not enter into them. It's not, they don't have, that's why it says, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Everybody does not have an ear to hear. They have a regular ear, but they don't have a spiritual ear. So thank God that you can hear him and you draw into him. Okay? We thank you. Father, we thank you for what our ears have heard and our hearts have felt. We have felt your presence this morning. Be with my sisters and brothers all over this world and draw me close to you. Never let me go. That song that says, draw me close to you. We pray that you draw us close to you, Lord God. For it's you who draw us 
draw us close to you. Never let us go. We lay it all down again to hear you say that we are your friend. Draw us close to you. It is in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus we pray and count it done. Amen. 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 Please continue to pray for everybody. I'm praying for you. And I'm already convinced God will not leave us, not forsake us. <laughs> and I'm excited. And one of these days, he's going to call us home. We're going to be finished with this old world. We're going to be going home to see our the one who really, 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 really loves us. <laughs> and we can be like Mary, just sitting at his feet. Don't have to be doing uh, the Martha work. You know, doing all the things that Martha, she's come, Martha, there's many things that I wasn't mindful of. But that one thing which is most needful, Mary has chosen. Let's choose that one thing which is most needful, that is to be at the feet of Jesus. That's it. I think I'm part of I'm going to get that scripture. I'm talking to you. That one thing which is most needful. Okay, I'm going to give you all the scripture so you'll get it. Okay, that one thing which is most needful, Mary has chosen. And we need to choose that one thing. That is most needful. That is to sit at Jesus' feet. <laughs> One thing that is is most needful. Okay, we need to look that up too. Okay, so y'all do not get off of, um the off course. Stay and remember this here. Where is God, my Maker, who gives songs in the night? You got neither hungering for Him, thirsting for Him. I pray that you're one of those people. Push the like button. Encourage somebody to come along. And continue to pray for Mother Allen, okay? <laughs> Some days I be feeling like an old lady. Other times I be feeling like I'm ready to jump rope. <laughs> but God is good. So I pray that you're enjoying your scripture. My sister is, is, is bubbling over. She's in the Old Testament too. And she's just, you can just hear it in her voice. She, the more you get into the word and eat it, she's just bubbling over with joy from what the Lord is feeding her soul. And this is soul food. We're going to focus on the, the covenant, the Davidic covenant. Because God said David is a man after his own heart. So I need to deal with the covenant of David. We're going to deal with the um, God giving us songs. And then we're going to deal with the Davidic covenant. It's going to take us back through the scriptures again. Please continue to pray for me as I pray for you. God loves you. Continue to write songs. Hallelujah. Annette. Continue to write. We thank God for you. And all of you who make comments and give remarks and give scriptures, I appreciate you. Even those who who are on the edge is like, I don't know why this woman going that way. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> but I thank God for you coming too. Because when you fellowship in in the spirit realm and you with thoughts, then the Lord is connecting us. And mine is just to give God praise and to give him glory and to give him honor. Because he's worthy to be praised. And every single one of us was made by him. The only reason we are breathing and taking a breath is because of God. Man does not give breath. If he could make breath, he's making these machines and putting electricity to them, but they're not breath. Okay? They're not the same. They're making these machines and putting electricity to them. But when the power is shut down, them machines are going to stop. The only thing that makes us stop is when God removes his breath. That's, then we depart from this body and go back to him. Okay? So we, we know who God is. Man does not give breath. Because if otherwise, we had one person, I think Michael Jackson said, just keep my body and when y'all find out what's wrong with my condition, and then y'all get bring me back to life. Well, he's dust and then he's not going to happen. Only person going to bring you to resurrection is Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. He's the only one that can give you life. Okay? He's the only one that can give you breath. Not you know the machines can be hooked up. Machines can do all kinds of things, but they don't have breath. Okay, please continue to pray. Stay in the word and meditate on the thought of seeking God. It says, "Where is my God, my Maker, who gives songs in there? Where is He?" It says, "None is sin, and let's not be among the none. Let's be among the ones who are saying, "Where is God? I'm seeking you, Lord. I'm seeking you. I love you. God loves you too. Have a blessed day." And continue to give God the praise. Let your light shine, okay? In Jesus' name, bye-bye.